factors, the palatability of these factors, there's also the content there, the sugar, the fats, the combination. But um, and, and I think that a lot of the research has been starting to point about how consuming this might be associated with potentially increased um, depression and other mental conditions. But the way that we starting to see it is that the it can be the reverse. And there's a two-way path here. Um, and, and that's what we have been starting to focus on is how we use these foods as an emotional regulation. Um, and when we have stress, when we have depression, and when we have these conditions, like these foods become our go-to precisely because of these attributes and these pleasurable attributes that we find in them. And I think this is exactly why they're called comfort foods, because we find comfort in them. If you think about it, I mean, this is how parents um, tell their children to stay quiet or they reward them for good grades. They give them candy or they take them to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm not calling on a particular place, but they just give them donuts or candy and that's a reward. Um, or you go through a break through a breakup or a hard time and you eat a pint of ice cream and that's what's really <laughs> satisfying <laughs> at that moment. So you really kind of seek that and but part of it is because of the physical properties, but there's also the emotional attachment. And the other thing that we have to consider is that most of these foods are consumed sometimes in a social context and we eat them with our families, we go out with friends, we go out to eat, and that actually is a pleasurable time it increases your serotonin and then you have this happy memory and you go back to these foods because it's comforting and again that's why they, we call them comfort foods